All of this breathing occurs because of the respiratory system, which includes the nose, throat, voice box, windpipe and lungs. At the top of the respiratory system, the nostrils bring air into the nose, where it's filtered, warmed and moistened. Tiny hairs called cilia protect the nasal passageways and other parts of the respiratory tract and filter out dust and other particles that enter the nose through the breathed air. Digestion is the process of breaking food down so that nutrients can be absorbed by cells. In your stomach, food is churned and mixed with acid and enzymes. It is then pushed into the first part of the small intestine where most digestion and absorption takes place. To aid absorption, it is mixed with bile, which is produced by the liver and discharged from the gallbladder through ducts. Digested food molecules pass into blood vessels in the walls of the intestine and are carried up through the portal vein into the liver for further processing and storage. The liver is usually a rich red color.
After you've kind of seen the results of what happens when you start studying intermolecular forces, and we start making a little bit more of a condensed phase, such as solids and liquids, you start getting all these unique properties of solids and liquids. Uh, liquids have quite a few unique ones, viscosity, um, surface tension, and one of the more unique ones is vapor pressure. That's a very special case, and that's probably another uh, thing completely. So let's just think about it. If you take water in a container and you allow it to start evaporating, the space above the surface of the water will start getting water molecules. That means it's a gas now, and gases impart pressures. So as that builds up, what's going to happen is these particles floating above the water can go back into the water unless they're whisked away. So, if you put a lid on the container, all the particles are trapped, so the water starts going back into the water phase, or I should say the water vapor goes back in. As this happens, you finally reach a state at which the exiting evaporation rate equals the entering condensation rate, and you reach what we call equilibrium. So when those two rates equal, you establish a constant pressure inside your container, and that pressure is called the vapor pressure of that liquid. In the case of water, you would say it's the vapor pressure of water. It's an example of what we call dynamic equilibrium, meaning when you look at the thing, you can't tell anything's happening, but in actuality, there are billions and billions of molecules leaving the surface of the water, and there's also billions and billions re-entering, and they are exactly the same rate, so there's no net change you have established what we call a vapor pressure. And that's hopefully a little bit more of a handle for you on what vapor pressure is. We have other things to tell you later about vapor pressure in other videos. The started solvent is heated to just above its flash point, the temperature at which enough flammable vapors are produced to maintain a flame. At the temperature, enough flammable vapors are given off for combustion. The lighted match hardly reaches the rim of the pan before the vapors ignite. The liquid does not burn, just the vapors. When those firefighters go in there, they're coming into different um, areas uh, with those vapors. So let's take a look at this. Now, you guys can see I'm going to pour it in there, but we don't see anything happening. And that's what's scary about it, right? It's just those vapors that are being poured down into the flask. We can get them. <laughs> Very scary, though, right? You didn't see yeah. anything happening. You want to see it again? Yeah, I kind of do, actually. Okay. It's very cool. All right. The so. invisible magic. All right. And then are you going to tell us what's in there, or is it still part of the secret? It's still part of the secret, okay. but it's definitely something that you could find within okay. your home. I mean, it's it's dangerous. That's what's scary yes. about it is these are items, organic um, materials that are in your home. So once again, nothing, you can really see anything. Again, the imagination. See it flicker a little bit. There it goes. Very cool. Pretty cool, right? Yes. All right, moving on then, next step. All right, next step is 
Uh, well, we know that you have had close encounters with flames quite often with us. So yes. I'm gonna actually blow that one out. So what I've brought, of course, in a very controlled atmosphere is, I'm gonna have you hand me that over there. We talked about those gases that may be in your home, like gasoline, paint thinner. Now, a lot of people have natural gas stove, too. Mm -hmm. um, and that is about 99% methane. So I brought in some methane gas for us. Okay. And I'm actually going to start putting it in here. While I it. build up some bubbles in our soap solution, I'm gonna have you get your hand wet. Okay. Um, you kinda wanna go up your arm a little bit, because what that water is gonna do is gonna help protect your skin. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna kinda show this first. That lighter that you had, I'm gonna steal back from you for okay. a second. I'll hand that to you. Okay, and now while you stand there sopping wet for one second, I'm gonna light this one so we can see, see we can see what you're gonna encounter, okay? okay. So count down from three, three two, two, one. one. Very cool, right? Lighter than air, flame yes. moved upwards. Flame moved up. That Our, was methane gas, correct? It was methane okay. gas, right? A